The cultural icon shocked the world with his passing on Christmas Day 2016. However, it is not entirely uncommon for talented people to get even more fortune and fame after they die. Perhaps the most famous example of this is internationally recognized artist Vincent van Gogh who committed suicide when he was penniless, but later became seen as one of the greatest artists in history. And while George Michael was already known as one of the most influential cultural icons of his time, and one of the most played artists on British radio for over two decades, he seems to have found even more fame in death. The former Wham! star's estate is going from strength to strength, with his music earning millions each year. He was found dead on Christmas Day 2016 by his partner at the time Fadi Fawaz. A few months later a coroner announced his death was due to heart and liver complications. His will caused some controversy and catfights amongst his loved ones, as can be expected when passing on a £97 million estate. Most of Michael's fortune was left to his sisters, father and friends, but did not mention his partner at the time of his death, Fawaz, or his former partner Kenny Goss who claimed Michael financially supported him when they were together. After his passing, his art collection was auctioned in England in 2019. The impressive £11.3 million reaped from the auction was given to various charitable organizations that Michael was involved with during his life. Alongside this his seven-bedroom London mansion was also sold in 2019, for an incredible £19 million. Michael originally bought the house in 2002 for only half of what it was sold for after his death. Michael's music, whether from his solo career or his time as part of Wham!, has continued to flood houses and stereo systems throughout the world. The pop music profits netted £4.3 in 2019, or roughly £11,656 per day. Additionally, the number of Spotify streams for his hit songs have increased by over 3,000%. Don't miss, Michael's sudden, unexpected passing at a relatively young age earned him true icon status with millions of fans mourning his death, and celebrities paying tribute to him as well. Amongst these celebrity faces was Elton John, who performed in Las Vegas on December 28 and emotionally addressed the audience. He said, more than anything as a human being he was one of the kindest, sweetest and most generous people I've ever met. Michael's musical prowess was undeniable, having formed groundbreaking pop duo Wham! with school friend Andrew Ridgely who both had ambitions of becoming musicians from a young age. Michael began his career busking in the London underground and working as a DJ, and after a short-lived experience forming a ska band called The Executive, Michael and Ridgely formed Wham! in 1981. Ridgely was also one of the first people Michael told of his bisexuality, along with one of his sisters but was advised to not tell his parents. In 1999 Michael aired his decision in an interview, adding that he had discovered he was gay, not bisexual. He noted that his bisexuality was not a way of avoiding admitting he was gay, but rather that he thought he had fallen in love with women as well as men. Michael said, then I fell in love with a man, and realized that none of those things had been love, 